Dolphin fans, how's it going? Mitchell Rands here from Chat Sports. And before we get into today's show, I want you to subscribe to the Dolphins channel. Why would somebody want to do that? Well, if you always find yourself looking for videos around the Miami Dolphins, we got you covered. But the thing that I love about Chat Sports is we're an interactive YouTube channel. So seriously, go ahead and click that big red button that says subscribe. I posted on our community tab that, hey, I want to know your questions. So on today's mailbag, we take a look at all the questions that were submitted. Eh, maybe not all of them, maybe like my 10 favorite. And then we're going to talk about them. So before I dive into today's show, last week's episode, I said turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss anything. So the first five people that have their noties on because you're here first, that type noty, noty gang down in the comments, I'm going to put you on next week's mailbag that I filmed. Sound good? Sure hope so. Let's get into today's show. I got Chase0420. If Tua finishes the year strong, Rookie of the Year honors. I think the only way that uh, Tua ends up getting in the Rookie of the Year is if they win out and if Ju Justin Herbert just absolutely totally fails. Now, here are their numbers, and this is a stat that is, or I guess an award that is based off stats. Two has been solid. However, when you look at the full year sample size, Justin Herbert, he has been better. I know you all are going to look at the quarterback rating, but Miami's team has more talent on it than the Chargers. You're also going to look at record, 4-1. and one. The only way Tua deserves to be in this conversation is if they went out make the playoffs if you disagree let me know next question coming in here from sergio martinez what do you think is the main reason why tua is struggling in the nfl i don't know if he's 100 percent struggling and if he is sergio i, I mean uh, seven touchdowns zero interceptions and a four and one record as a rookie that's pretty good i guess for struggling but i think what you're alluding to is the fact that chan gailey isn't allowing him really to open up the playbook, really isn't allowing him to chuck it down the field. Here are his first half numbers against the Bengals. 12-19, 111 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Miami only scored six points. They didn't have a lot going for them. And one of the biggest things that I look at with this offense, it is being held back a little bit because they aren't letting Tua be aggressive. Well, once you know this, in the third quarter against the Bengals, they allowed Tua to be aggressive. They allowed him to throw it down the field. They allowed him to really open up their overall play calling. And he was 167 yards, 13 to 16, and a touchdown. All I'm saying is this. Gailey, he needs to trust Tua more. And it might be difficult because he's a rookie. But you don't draft somebody in the top five. You don't draft somebody to be your future quarterback, your franchise guy, unless you fully trust them. He's going to make mistakes. He's young. He's a rookie. But the only way he's going to be able to learn is if you give him the keys to the car and fully allow him to drive the car. Do you trust Tua? I want you to give me a Y for yes, or I want you to go down in the comment section and type N for no. The past few weeks, I've said this. I think the offense is better under Ryan Fitzpatrick. However, if Tua is your future, you do need to end up playing him right now. But after what I saw this past week against the Bengals, sure, their defense is not that great. I am getting more and more confident around to uh, I would type my Y for yes. If you're typing that Y for yes, guess what? We also got a special deal going on around some Tua gear. Go to chatsports.com slash Tua where you can get this Tua jersey for only $79.99. Now, if you want this Tua jersey, this one's $99.99. Bottom line is this. Tua is the future. We got some awesome deals going on. Maybe you can't afford a jersey. It's all good. I understand. We also have these t-shirts here. $26.99. Maybe you can't afford a t-shirt. Again, I understand. It's all good. Well, guess what? We also have some face masks around, too. Uh, if you're looking for a fun holiday gift, maybe a stocking stuffer, face masks, jerseys, t-shirts, all around the Dolphins quarterback, chatsports.com slash Tua. I'll put that link available for you all in the comments and in the description. Bringing in this next question from Dano. Dano, I said it last week, and I'm going to say it again. Get a picture. Should Najee Harris be... One of the guys they try to get, or maybe Waddle, I think you mean Jalen Waddle, if he is in the draft. I like, I do like Najee Harris, and I like his ability to be able to run the football. However, I am going to stay away from Harris, especially in round one. I get that you have two first round picks and two second round picks. You could potentially look at convincing me to go out and get Harris in round two. However, I'm not 100% sure if he's there. He is my RB2 in this year's draft. I have Travis Etienne way above him simply because I think Etienne's going to be able to do it all. But uh, Najee Harris is a player that I am, I'll be honest, a little bit worried about that he could potentially bust. 
And when it comes to Jalen Waddle, another solid, solid receiver. But we're going to talk about him in just a little bit. So Dolphin fans, one more time, subscribe for free Dolphins videos and make sure you turn on those notifications. If, hey, you're looking down in the comments and nobody's commented Noti Gang yet, go ahead and do it because I'm going to pick the first five people that comment on our videos that, hey, we're going to throw you some love. Now, maybe you don't know how to turn on the notifications. One more time, again, you're going to click that bell right underneath the video. Now, if you want the notifications to pop up right on your phone, this is what you need to do. It's a four-step process. It's super easy. Go to your settings app. Yes, on your phone. And then you're going to scroll down, tap on YouTube. Then you're going to click or tap, I guess, notifications. Then turn on allow notifications. No more excuses. You shouldn't miss any more of our videos. Appreciate it. All right, next thing we're getting into here is Stevie. What up, Stevie? If you had the choice, would you take Allen Robinson in free agency or draft a receiver in the first round? This is a fun and entertaining question. Allen Robinson is my number one free agent wide receiver. However, there's also a lot of talented dudes in the draft as well, like a guy like Jamar Chase. I know some of y'all threw out the name like Devonta Smith or like a Jalen Waddell as well. As much as I love those three receivers and as much as I love Jamar Chase, you know, you have to definitely look at Allen Robinson. So before I give you guys my answer, which would you do? Would you sign Allen Robinson, type S, or would you type D for draft a wide receiver? The reason why I am going to say type S for Allen Robinson is because I know what Allen Robinson is. He is a number one wide receiver who has dealt with Blake Bortles, Nick Foles, Mitch Trubisky, a bunch of no-name guys. Tua needs a number one receiver. Yes, he has Devontae Parker, but imagine Devontae Parker, Mike Kosicki, Preston Williams, and Allen Robinson. That is a phenomenal, phenomenal receiving core. So as much as I love a lot of these other young receivers in the draft, I'm going to go with the slam dunk and Allen Robinson and really help Tua take that next step. Super Cap, you're up next here, my dude. What do you think is the biggest need for the Dolphins in the offseason? It's a tough question. Um, I, I'm probably going to go with the offensive line definitely up there. I know they have a lot of young players, but you still need some depth at the position. I believe they started three rookies this past week, and when your main guy is Tua, you need to have better offensive line work. A running back, I don't believe in drafting a running back in round one, but it is a major need. Gaskin's been playing well, but still a need. Linebacker is a major need for me, and... I'd probably say also some safeties as well. So if you guys want to let me know what you think the biggest needs are, again, let me know down in the comments section. Let me know, seriously, what's the biggest Dolphins need? Brian Flores has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job this season with the work that, uh, with the players that he was presented. They were bad the year before, it totally turned it around. But you do have a lot of needs there. I said offensive line. If I'm looking at the defense, I'm probably going to look at the linebackers. But let me know, biggest need for the Dolphins. Luca Bubbles, he's been hitting me up on IG and Twitter. If you guys want to hit me up, I'm Matt Mitchell Renz365. Do you think the Dolphins could beat the Chiefs? Yes, you can win literally any single week. I mean, that's what the NFL has showed us. The New York Jets almost beat the Las Vegas Raiders this past week. The Miami Dolphins, they lost the Denver Broncos a few weeks ago in a game where everyone was like, wait a minute, how the heck did that happen? Just the other day, the Broncos almost beat the Chiefs. Bottom line is this, if you come out ready to play, you can beat anyone. And for Kansas City, if they want to beat you, they can. But if they start out slow, I think Miami could really hit them hard. Miami T.Y., get a picture. Where do you think Xavier Howard ranks in the league as of cornerbacks? Last week, I answered this question, and I was a little bit on the fence. I was like, you know, Howard's been great. I don't know if he's number one. You also got to throw out a guy there like Jalen Ramsey. But Howard is the best cornerback in the National Football League, and it's wild. He's got eight interceptions this year, by far number one in the league. He's got 16 picks in his last 29 games. The only thing that's really held back Howard this his entire career has been injuries. And I love what Miami did. They paid Byron Jones. They have Xavier Howard, which really allows that entire defense to thrive because Miami's like, all right, we're just going to be able to send the house because we know we have the two of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League and really get things done. Yes, Howard got kicked out of the game this past week, but I think it was a little bit ticky-tacky. Xavier Howard deserves to be up in that conversation for Defensive Player of the Year. I don't know if he'll get it, but he definitely deserves to be in that conversation. Next guy, your boy, Bolts, get a picture. So you think Devontae Parker is a true number one receiver. Well, you spelled Devontae wrong, unless you're going to throw Devontae Adams and Devontae Parker together if they had a baby. That's what the name would look like. I love me some Devontae Parker. And when he first came out of college out of Louisville, 
I was like, man, if you're trying to make a Madden receiver in terms of skill attributes, this is what you make him look like. It was slow to start. Now, after an incredible year last year, nine touchdowns over 1,200 yards, top five, I believe, in terms of yards, he really showed that he has the talent. This year, he hasn't put up quite the numbers, but you can see when he's clicking and when he's got a quarterback that's clicking with him, he is really almost unguardable. So I do think that he is a true number one. I don't know if he's a top 12 receiver in the National Football League, but I'd be more than confident to be able to build my offense around a receiver like Devontae Parker. Ian Reid, again, another question. Much love to you, my dude. Do you think the Dolphins will go far in the playoffs if they make it? I'll say this. The Tennessee Titans showed us last year that if you can get hot at the right moments, play solid defense, and run the football, that anything is possible. Before I say will they make a deep run, how about the Dolphins just look to try to get in because they have a tough schedule. Chiefs, Patriots, Raiders, Bills. Let's look to get in the playoffs before saying how many games are going to win in the playoffs. Hopefully you understand. Andrew Turner, you're next up here on this Miami Dolphins mailbag. Okay, what would it take for Brian, Brian Flores to win Coach of the Year? This is a fun and entertaining question. Obviously, Brian Flores has done an absolute phenomenal job with this team. So I looked up the latest Coach of the Year odds. Mike Tomlin at plus 105 of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's number one. Brian Flores at plus 350. He's at number two. The way that the Dolphins, Brian Flores, wins Coach of the Year is if the Steelers, they lose maybe one, maybe two games, and then Miami, I think they either have to win out or go 11-5 and five and make the playoffs. When you consider the fact that they were minus 188 in point differential last year and they're plus 91 this year, it just goes to show that Flores has done a phenomenal job. He might not win the award, but he definitely, definitely deserves to be in the conversation for NFL Coach of the Year. If y'all have made it this far in the video, go ahead, give me a like. We would appreciate it.